Hey guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. So today is Friday, happy Friday. That means that it's vlog day. So today I am taking you guys along with us as we do all of our chores here on the urban homestead. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a great day on the homestead. So without further ado, let's hop into things. On today's agenda, I will be doing my exercises first and foremost. A lot of you guys know I sustained a really serious injury about two years ago, and I'm finally just now getting into a really good groove of healing, and that means that I have to stay up on my exercises every single day. Oh, it burns. It's crazy to think like this is hard for me right now when I used to play college volleyball, but I'm coming to terms with the fact that I have a back injury and it's gonna take a long time to get better. In fact, it's gonna be the journey of a thousand steps like so many good things in life. Uh, but, uh, but it also feels really good. All right, I've got my worm tea ready to go. I try not to make this thing too heavy because of a back injury. If you guys wanna know how to make your own worm tea, I've got a link, just click right there. Foliar feed my plants with worm tea in the morning because that is when the pores of the plant are most open. Like think of plants, right? They're ready to accept that morning dew first thing in the morning. Over the course of the day, they kind of close those pores and then at night they open them back up and then they kind of close as the day goes on. So in the morning is one of the best times to feed plants because their pores are more open, but also it's not as hot, especially in the summer. You want to be mindful of when you foliar feed plants because you don't want to burn them. But one great thing about worm tea is that the likelihood in general of burning your plants is very low because it is a very balanced, very gentle fertilizer. And so I'm never really worried that I'm gonna burn my plants, but I do try to be mindful of that. I take care of them in the morning rather than in the, in the noonday sun or even at night because, because the likelihood of them absorbing as many of the nutrients as possible is, is so much lower at night than it is in the morning. I love this plant so much and I did not save the tag. I did not write it down and I cannot remember the name to save. So anyway, if you know it, leave it in a comment down below, please. There we go. I got stuck. Gotta help my tomcat out. He might be a little camera shy, but I love him and he's my tomcat. Okay, at that time, we are gonna build the garden beds and hopefully we're gonna get this knocked out in just a couple hours. Today, Tommy is helping me because I'm still getting over this back injury and it's important to ask for help and not believe that you're superwoman. So today he's gonna be helping me and I'm super excited to have his help. It's always nice to have a buddy and uh, build things together. And together, we are gonna show you how to build some really simple, really easy, bag-friendly, rent-friendly garden beds. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see how they turn out. All right, my friends, let's talk about this plan. Here is what you're gonna need for this project. Then we are going to put this all together by sanding, Cutting. You can see my show notes cut list down below and I'm putting it all together. Yeah. I want to share with you guys our supplies because I want to encourage you guys to get creative. You guys might have stuff laying around your property that you can use just like us. We are actually repurposing these cedar fence pickets, which were laying in the back of our property, just unused for years. And they have this really beautiful finish that I'm about to show you. I love how we can take something that was old and forgotten about and restore life to it by sanding it down and giving it this new kind of like rustic patina look. I just love the way it's finished. And I wanted to share that with you guys because I think it's really easy to feel like we have to use all new products. Um, another thing to consider to save money on this project is using coal lumber, which is lumber that has been damaged and thus discounted. This piece of wood had a crack on one end of it for about a foot and a half. And so what I was able to do is just cut that part off and then use the rest of this beautiful wood for the project. Another money-saving tip is buying lumber that is extraordinarily long. This is a 16 foot two by four. And I bought this when I built our raised garden beds uh, about a year ago. 
and it helped me save a significant amount of money per garden bed. So it was a decent amount of savings and well worth the extra trouble. And here, Tommy is helping me set up a stop lock, which helps you to quickly and easily cut the same size pieces of wood very quickly, very easily. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, because essentially you just butt up the wood to the stop lock to the length that you need it to be, and then you cut from there. So this is what that looks like. Once we had all of our wood cut and sanded, it was time to lay everything out. I'm a really visual person, so I like to lay the project out to make sure that I've cut everything that I need. And so laying everything out in this way helps me see that, and I thought I would share that process with you guys in case that's helpful to any other fellow visual learners. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, the actual build of this project is so easy. It does help to have somebody there with you to just kind of keep the boards in place. I've done it by myself though, so it's totally possible to do it on your own. Um, however, it was really nice to have a buddy. And so if you have somebody who can help you, a neighbor, a friend, a spouse, a partner, um, I would definitely recommend that. Now this is one of my favorite parts. I don't know that I've talked a lot about this on my channel, but these I believe are called corner clamps. And it helps me build boxes really, really easily, especially if I'm building by myself. And I really like these because it does help you get a really nice, clean 90 degree angle. I've built boxes without using corner clamps before, and I don't think that they turned out as well. So we use these corner clamps to really square everything up. And then once everything is in those corner clamps, you basically have a box and you just have to screw it together. Once you've got your box, it's time to lay these in there. I'm not really sure what to call these. Tommy called these spanners and uh, then you've got your garden bed. All that's left to do is lay down the slats. And here is the final product, pre-stain. Some of these boards are stained because we repurposed them from an old project, but I actually really liked this kind of like combination of wood colors. I don't know why, but let me know in the comments down below if you guys think I should finish staining or leave as is. Now, once you've got the slats in these beds, all you have to do is fill them with pots. And that is why I think this is such a genius rent-friendly solution because you can repurpose seasonal pots like this one, or you can use dollar store pots like this one. Just make sure whatever it is, it's got great drainage. That's why I'm kind of plucking out some of the plastic here to make sure that there are good drainage holes because that's really important for healthy plants. Now you can also use grow bags and that is what I am using um, the majority of to fill these beds with. Uh, these are three gallon grow bags that I got on Amazon and I'll include a link in the show notes down below. Once these are all filled, I basically have a very straightforward, very portable, rent-friendly square foot garden. And I actually wish I had thought of this sooner because I think it would have saved me a lot of shoveling dirt into our garden beds. But alas, my failures can be your successes and I'm really happy to share this with you guys. Here is the final result, pre-planting, and I really love how it looks. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell as well. I'll see you guys in the next one.